Um, uh, because of the dynamic abilities of, of all of your predecessors who have come through the program, I tell them that if ever they get sick and they're in the hospital, the very first thing they should do is ask whether or not their nurse graduated from Becker College. <laughs> you know, it was the Bishop Desmond Tutu who said if it appears, when he was receiving the Nobel Peace Prize, he said, if it appears as though my head oh, bears she above the crowd, it is because I'm standing on the shoulders of those who've come before me. And each and every one of you as a graduate, you're standing on the shoulders of those who have come before you. You're standing on the shoulders of Florence Nightingale and the countless other graduates who have come through this program. But not only that, because of your leadership, your legacy, your intellectual ability, there will be countless others that will now stand on your shoulders. To whom much is given, much is required. I congratulate you for all of the great things that you've done throughout this program and the things that you will do as you go out into the world of work and help people to help nurse people back to good health. I appreciate each and every one of you. I want you to live your dream and discover your passion day in and day out. So on behalf of the entire Becker College family, congratulations. Good luck to you, and we wish you the best. I would now like to introduce Dr. Esper, Dean of Nursing. Thank you. Our faculty friends and family, and of course, graduates of December 2014. I'm honored to be asked to speak on the 30th anniversary of Becker College's nursing program. It is also my 26th year anniversary as a faculty member, so I'm definitely the old timer of the program. The nursing program started in 1982 in a Quonset hut on the Leicester campus. Humble beginnings. There was one director, Madge McNair, and four faculty in those early days. I was offered a position there in 1983 at that time, but chose to stay at St. Vincent's Hospital for, in Worcester for reasons that included small children, short commute. I did join the Becker team in 1988 when the program moved to the Worcester campus. Our nursing lab was one room, and all of the courses taught at Becker needing a lab shared this one room. Our faculty had no computers. We had one overworked secretary who typed every word of our paperwork and printed it all out on the dot matrix printer. For those of you who remember that dot, 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 dot. She shared her crowded space with myself and my late great colleague, Carol Walsh, upstairs in what is now known as the Weller Building. Student grades were posted in the hallway based on ID numbers, big changes. Over the next 10 years, our director, Madge McNair, and her four faculty built the great nursing program that exists today. We went from 15 students to 60 students each fall which presented massive challenges. But we overcame every one so successfully that Becker's nursing program achieved National League for Nursing Accreditation. By the 1990s, we had to hire adjunct faculty to help us cope with the ever-growing enrollments. As the program grew, we outgrew our accommodations, moving in 1991 to a beautiful, large, old house at the corner of Fruit and Cedar Streets in Worcester and remained there until 2000. We each had our own office with expanded labs and a conference room. Then in 2000, still growing, we moved into the brand new, now where we are, Health Science Building on Seaver Street with multi-level accommodations which are handicapped accessible with elevators, latest electronics and IT support. 
In the last five years, Becker's nursing program has continued to expand, offering an RN to BSN program, and in the fall of 2012, a pre-licensure BSN program. Despite growing pains and challenges over the years, we remain a committed, dedicated faculty which gets results from our students as evidenced by our 100% NCLEX passing rate for each of the last four years. <laughs> Becker College has kept up with lightning speed technology and developments. Whether we are charting patients' records in the hospital or in Becker's own advanced computer labs and facilities, our nursing labs use computer simulations more and more to assist in learning nursing skills. Despite the difficult learning curves involved in mastering so much of today's technology and new programs appearing constantly, we have managed to keep up with technology without sacrificing our sacred purpose, that of giving personal one-to-one -one care for each patient. So 30 years later, are things different for the new nurse? Despite incredible technological advances, what remains constant in nursing? I want to share some thoughts with you about what makes a great nurse. Is the best nurse the nurse with the A average, having the best technological skills, and best clinical uh, critical thinking skills? I believe it is much more than that. I believe anyone of normal intelligence can master these skills and apply them under real life nursing conditions. Great nursing requires a mixture of compassion, knowledge, and a selfless approach towards patients which cannot be found in a textbook. I believe that great nurses treat the whole person. Every patient has a story and it's important to take the time to hear it. Each patient is someone's child, infant, mother, father, grandparent, or friend. Each has unique needs in treatment, education, and care. Great nursing should incorporate the very latest technological knowledge, but not at the expense of the patient's unique and personal needs. When I entered nursing, salaries were very low. Nursing was definitely a vocation. We were not in the profession for the money. They were challenging times, but tremendous learning experiences about life, death, and people. The work was hard, understaffed, and often overwhelming. Gradually, I learned to better organize my time, perfect my skills, set priorities, and increase my self-confidence. We worked as a team to help each other. No one walked by a light saying, that's not my patient. We would not abandon our colleagues to struggle alone, to let them struggle alone or while we went on break. Our dedication to our patients and our determination to never neglect a single patient meant that every patient had excellent care. Hospital stays were longer than today, so we got to know our patients very well. Today, unions, safe staffing guidelines, and technology is an asset to the practicing nurse. Because of new learning needs and the ever-increasing technology and frenetic working pace, the graduate nurse faces many challenges. Are the values of past generations of nurses old-fashioned or out-of-date today? I am saddened to hear that high salaries are the primary motivation for some students to enter the profession. The joys I have experienced in my profession of nursing have far surpassed any financial award rewards. When you have held and dried a newborn after experiencing the miracle of birth, when you hear the grateful sigh of a patient after administering a much needed back rub, when you hold the hand of a dying patient and reassure him he's not alone, 
then you have captured the essence of nursing. I will always believe that lack of dedication to sincerely caring for our sick and suffering patients lessens us as humans, as professionals, and as a society as a whole. As a professor of nursing, I delight in seeing my students graduate into the profession. I am proud of them when I see them demonstrate the caring and compassionate attitudes that I believe are timeless and hopefully carried into the next generation of nurses to come. I consider myself to be truly blessed to have the opportunity every year to share my passion for nursing with a new group of students. Caring for the patient as a unique human being will never be old fashioned or outdated. To remember this is my wish for you as you graduate. Care for your patients as you would your loved ones. Share your talents, your time and yourself with your patients and then you will have truly captured the essence of nursing. Happy 30th anniversary to the nursing program and congratulations to the class of 2014. by her Nana, Antoinette Harvey. Mm -hmm. Sarah dedicates her pen to her husband, Ziggy, for his love and support. I couldn't have done it without you. We did it, Schultz. Schultz? When we won the cup. She plans to pursue a career in emergency medicine and or critical care. Pale Singh. Pinned by Professor Loyalty. In this ceremony, we pay tribute to Florence Nightingale's dedication and compassion. The most solemn portion of the ceremony is the lighting of the lamp and reciting of the pledge. Each graduate is now receiving the light of an recite is an adaptation of the original Nightingale Pledge created in 1893. Reciting the pledge and carrying the lamp affirms the graduates' professional responsibility to all who need nursing and health care, as well as their commitment to the profession of nursing. In full knowledge of the obligations I am undertaking, I promise to take care of the sick with all the skill and understanding I possess without regard to race, creed, color, politics, or social status, sparing no effort to preserve quality of life, alleviate suffering, and promote health as affirmed by the person. I will respect at all times the dignity and beliefs of the patients under my care, holding in confidence all personal information entrusted to me and refraining from any action which may endanger life or health. I will endeavor to keep my professional knowledge and skill at the highest level and to give loyal support and cooperation to all members of the healthcare team. I will do my utmost to honor the International Code of Ethics applied to nursing and to uphold the integrity of the profession in nursing. At this time, the Becker College Department of Nursing, Administration, and Faculty would like to present to you and to welcome to the profession the class of December 2014. your candles and be seated. Thank you. Ms. Nay, since her first semester in nursing, serves as president this semester. She also helped with the closing sale. Samantha Pritzia served as secretary. Did you get that? Soon, Sarah. Soon. <laughs> 
directions. Samantha Kurtzia served as secretary and assisted with the bake sale, clothing sale, and the Yankee Candle fundraiser. Maine Feeney served as the fundraising chair, successfully overseeing the three fundraisers this semester. Clothing sale volunteers were Ben Pousson, Alicia Diaz, Jennifer Thurlow, and Kelly Gates, Victoria Lenahan, Anthea Macaruso, Samantha Lewis, Drina Diambra, and Greg Haskins. Along with Maeve and Samantha, already mentioned, Pyle Singh, Stella Persim, Persim, I just thought it was going to have this, Persimai, Sarah Smith, Samantha Lewis, Anthony, Alicia, and Victoria volunteered for the bake sale and or the Yankee Candle fundraiser. I couldn't quite find out exactly how much money they earned, but they paid all their bills and they're leaving $400. over $1,300 for this pinning ceremony. Um, some of that is um, paid for by the students, some of it from the nursing budget, and I also want to recognize the, the Becker College student um, government office because they also give money for um, the pinning and for all clubs. Victoria, Anthony, and Maeve assisted in the spring 2014 March of Dimes Walk in Worcester. Further, both Anthony and Maeve have helped out with Becker Collar blood pressure. Now, yeah, she says. <laughs> <laughs> Samantha, just like Cindy. Yeah, yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Jack, you want out here? Yes, Zach, want to get out? Thank you all for coming. It's been a long and trying trip, but we're finally here. It seems like forever ago when we all first met, there were over 30 of us at our nursing orientation. How exciting. Scoping each other out then, trying to see who to approach first, I had such excitement and enthusiasm. We had finished our prereqs and had been accepted to the best nursing program in Massachusetts. There was no reason in my mind to doubt Professor Uphong when she said, I look forward to seeing you all at pinning. Good luck. <laughs> Fast forward two long, trying, exhausting years later, and here we are. It's finally pinning. Our hard work and commitment to school has paid off. I speak on behalf of all of the students here when I say thank you to our boyfriends, girlfriends, spouses, fiancés, parents, children, family, and friends for your standing by us, for giving our absences at family events, and your unrelenting support through our most stressful and trying times. 
I know I couldn't have done it without mine. To our professors, we'd also like to thank you. You've helped teach an extraordinary amount of information into these past two years. Our clinical professors, these experiences were the best. Applying our class knowledge to the real world setting was so valuable. I'd like to recap some of the highlights, but there's too many to count. Our hard work, dedication, and determination may have been misunderstood sometimes for lack of appreciation, but we want to let you know that we are thankful for you today and the lessons you have taught us. Please accept the roses on your chairs as a token of our appreciation. Lastly, to my classmates. So excited. <laughs> I'm so happy to have met and been with each and every one of you. We've been through a lot together, thick and thin. Nursing school has served as a strong foundation for lifelong friendships. Hold on to the determination and passion you started school with, and we'll all go very far. This is just the beginning. Congratulations. Thank you for coming. And now, please welcome Professor McNeil back on stage for the closing remarks. Thank <laughs> you.